Hi, this is Jim with Nomadic Pursuits, and I'm back for another video. Uh, today I've got a photo from Norway, and um, I was on a uh, sort of a boat excursion in one of the fjords there, and it was really beautiful, as you can see from the photo. And I was hanging off the back of the boat, well, not hanging, but uh, I was looking out the back of the boat and uh, just shooting off into the fjords. So um, I have this image in Lightroom, which you can see here. And uh, I want to export it to Aurora uh, HDR Pro. And it's a single exposure. Uh, there's no way I could ever line up brackets uh, off the back of a moving boat in the ocean. But um, it's a great single exposure, pretty evenly lit and all that. So I'm going to take it into Aurora HDR Pro and show you how I uh, edit a, a single photo in there. You can go kind of extreme if you want to get an HDR look, or you can go a little bit more tame. just depends what you want to do. Uh, nonetheless, they still call it an HDR. They just, you know, when you launch it with a single photo, when you, when you launch Aurora with a single photo, it says create HDR, as you can see here in my mouse. So I'm going to hit create HDR. And as you can see, Aurora is starting to load. Uh, so give that a moment for the photo to come in here. And uh, there's a number of preset options. Uh, if you aren't already familiar with Aurora, um, it will default to make a few changes. Usually it takes this HDR look here and it bumps it up a little bit. But I'm going to start in the preset categories. There were a couple that I, were, uh, that I was looking at beforehand. Um, I like uh, in this landscape section, I like this landscape enhanced. Um, and there was another one. Uh, this one's kind of cool, this soft and airy. kind of gives it a dreamy feel. And then um, landscape realistic is good. I'm, I'm a fan of uh, realistic. I like to give my photos a little bit of punch, but I don't want to make it, you know, over the top uh, extreme. So I think I'm going to go with this one, this landscape realistic. So I just hit the preset button again. Uh, that disappears, and there's my photo. And truthfully, I'm basically about done. Uh, that's how great I think a lot of the presets are in Aurora, that you can literally uh, just click the preset and be about finished with it. So um, now that doesn't mean you have to. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, as you see, it's in the structure category, but I like to sort of close that. There's a million options here on the right-hand side. You can start with tone. Uh, if you want to change the whites, maybe this guy thinks a little bright, uh, so maybe you want to take the tones down a little bit there with the whites um, or the highlights. They're already pretty uh, pretty low. Uh, maybe even move it up if you want to make it a little bit brighter. Uh, there you go. I uh, actually kind of like that. Maybe not quite that bright. Um, yeah, that brightens that up a little bit there. Um, then I go into the structure category. Clarity is a, a great one and very popular, especially if you use Lightroom. You're probably familiar with uh, what that does already, but gives it a little bit more punch. Um, I think I will leave that there. I usually don't mess with the HDR look and the HDR detail. Let me show you. If I move the HDR detail up a bit, I'll just move it a lot here. There you go. You can see the sky especially kind of exploded on us. I tend not to do that. If you want to punch your look, then that's certainly an oppor uh, opportunity for you. But I tend to leave that alone. Uh, the noise, uh, you know, I'll show you how to add another layer and take noise out of, uh, let's say, the sky. But um, if you look up here in the left corner, you can see this was at 24 millimeters f/8. It was ISO 100, and this is a Sony uh, full-frame mirrorless camera. So there's really not any noise to speak of usually. So I will zoom in, and uh, you give that just a second and um, take a look here to see if there's any real noise to look at. Uh, there you go. I don't really see any, there's not much visible noise, so I'm gonna zoom back out, but I'll show you how to do that uh, in a little bit. Usually I do that as a finishing touch. Uh, radiance is, is a great one, right? You can sort of see that there if you wanna change the smoothness, brightness, color, etc. cetera. Um, I like this, this, uh, this box a lot, the color box. So the saturation, it's up 19. I might bump that a little bit more Kind of give it a little bit more umph, uh, and maybe a little bit more vibrance, and uh, there you go, right? So uh, it's getting a little bit more color punch, but not a lot. Uh, the temperature slider is a popular one. If I go left, of course, it'll make it more blue. Okay, that was a bit too much. And if we go to the right, it'll make it a bit warmer, also a bit too much. Uh, I'm going to try this a tiny hint of warmth um, instead of being just pure blue. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I think closer to four, three. All right. There we go. How about that? That's There's three. Okay. Um, the tint, of course, left will make it kind of green. I'll show you that. And to the right, I'll make it kind of pinkish purple. Uh, I don't want to overdo that. 
I might give it a little tint uh, on the purple side just to give it a little bit more color. Again, pretty low. I think I will, you can also just type in the number there with your, with your keyboard. I think I'll make that a three. Um, and uh, there you go. So that is that. Um, details, of course, small, medium, large. You can do it globally or just in the highlights or shadows category. I actually like it the way it is. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, glow is, is kind of fun. It makes it a little bit dreamier. Let me let me bump that up just to show you. Uh, nice effect there, but it brightens the image a lot, which I don't really want to do, so I'm going to leave that alone. Top and bottom lighting. I'm a fan of this one. In this, uh, uh, this photo, I actually think I can bump up the bottom a little bit, so I've just done that. It was small, uh, as you can see it's a plus six, but um, it helps a little bit balance out the exposure. I think I'm gonna go with about plus eight there. If you wanna compare before and after, uh, this is the after, and if you click that dot off, turns it off, that's the before. So after, a little bit brighter, before, a little bit darker. So I'm gonna turn that back on and leave that. Uh, the color filter is another place I like to, to usually spend some time. Uh, obviously, there's a lots of blue here, so if I just turn up the saturation on the blue, um, there you go, it, it gets a little bit bluer. But uh, Or I could turn it down to take some of the saturation out to make it a little more washed out, a little more gray. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can just double click on the word and it'll take it back to the primary setting. The other thing is you can mess with the luminance, right? How bright is the color? So it's currently a negative nine. If I want to really darken up the blues, there you go. I'm taking it way down and, and the image gets darker. Or I take it way up and of course the image gets a lot lighter because there's so much blue in it. I think it was on about a negative nine. So I'll put it back about where it was because I did like the look of it. Um, color toning is basically split toning. So uh, there's just different options here and you can just experiment and do whatever you like. Uh, but... Uh, that one's actually not so bad, but I think I'm just going to, let me compare before and after. Yeah, it's a little too much blue, so I'm just going to uh, turn that off. I'm not going to use that. Uh, and then vignette. So so those are some basics, though, but if you wanted to go for more of an HDR look, you can mess a lot with the structure and, and bump up the HDR detail, as I showed you earlier in the video. And there you go. I'm not going to do it for this photo because I like it the way it is. Um, and then noise. Let's say you want to... Uh, reduce noise in the sky, then you would just hit plus to add a new layer, and I would call it sky, if I could type sky denoise, denoise, there you go. Um, and there you have it. Uh, there's your new layer that's created, and what I would do is I would go in and to this HDR denoise, and I would just say smooth and amount and super smooth. Um, and if you see, the sky's getting really dreamy looking, maybe a little overdone there. Uh, but it's also taking it out of the water, and that's because we haven't masked any of that yet. Um, I actually like that. Um, this is the uh, opacity for that layer. So here's zero opacity, which means none of the effect, and then there's 100% opacity. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it is making some change to it. I actually think I would take that down a little bit. Uh, maybe 60% opacity. It leaves some of the detail in the... Uh, in the water, but it takes a bit out of the sky. The other thing you can do is, if, if you want to do it just for the sky, is you take your brush and you go just brush in on the sky. Uh, let me show you the mask. Um, here's the mask, right? So if you just want to brush in this noise reduction to the sky, I'm doing this pretty roughly since I'm not trying to do a fine tune edit. Uh, if you remove the mask, you can see, um, let me zoom in a little bit. You can see how it's affected just the sky. Uh, so you have a little bit softer, dreamier sort of version uh, that's applied just to the sky, and you haven't taken the details out of the water. And frankly, I like the details in the uh, the wake of the boat there. So that's an easy way to do it. And if you want to show the mask again, there's the mask. You can see where it's applied and where it's not applied. You can also tell sort of in here where the mask has been applied. Uh, and if I turn this layer off, it'll bring back some of that detail. And if I turn it on, uh, it uh, it removes it because of the denoise, de uh, and and I like that result. So that's uh, that's the photo. That's a quick edit, and uh, that's really how I use a single exposure. And as I said, and, and as I showed, you can get a bit of an HDR look if you use this uh, this setting down here under structure, where you go for HDR look and HDR detail. But I I tend not to do much of that because I don't want to uh, blow it out too much. In fact, here's the settings from the original. Uh, so I moved clarity and HDR look a little bit, but HDR detail I, I left alone completely.
Um, let me turn back on the, uh, the layer that has the denoise in it. And there's your final image, and I'm done. So thanks for tuning in. Let